Chimps without chimps. Now, this is a challenge that I and many other people have already done before, but this time the twist is that it's a survival challenge. I want to see just how far I can make it using only these four towers and the only money that we can really splurge on to upgrade these towers with is, well, the uh, money that we're going to get from popping balloons. Because, of course, farms are not a monkey. So that would be allowed if not for the fact that we were playing on the only game mode that bans farms. Now, I will admit this was an idea that was re-inspired by videos made from popular YouTubers who don't normally play Bloon CD6, but to my delight, decide to play BTD6. And if you ask me, well, I am always delighted to see somebody pick up the game to share it to their audience, no matter how badly they may play it. Because at the end of the day, getting a new set of eyes to the Bloon's world is always a good thing, and you never know. They might eventually become addicted enough to the game to uh, want to get better at it, and soon they'll be uh, styling on everybody and chimps and whatnot. You know, that and uh, more players equals more views, but anyways. I was actually thinking about playing the same game mode and difficulty as said video in order to, you know, compare how long I, how long I could survive with this subset of towers, but honestly, I find chimps more fun, at least for this challenge specifically. Reason being, I feel like farms kind of take out the fun in the build-up to late game. By that I mean, like, because early game is so easy, I can get out farms really early, which accelerates my farming and thus makes uh, mid-game e even easier. And and so there's not really much going on. I always like to have some sort of uh, brain power required at all stages of the game. That's how I personally see it. I dropped the Spike Factory because, again, I'm thinking towards late game, epi late game, and... Uh, wouldn't have it any other way than to go for Supermines, right? Supermines is love, Supermines is life, and Supermines is the, the gift that keeps on giving. I genuinely believe that with it, round 200 might be a possibility. I did set the difficulty down to easy mode, by the way, if you haven't noticed already by the pricing. Just because, again, I want to squeeze out as many rounds as possible, and easy, of course, allows me to do that. Now for uh, the lead balloons, I guess I'll go ahead and get my bomb shooter right about here. Should I buy a range 2? Let me just see. Does it reach? Yes, it does. Perfect. Because I want to turn this part into a Balloon Crush. Balloon Crush is an insane chimps carry because it beats everything that's not a bad. And that means you can save up an exorbitant amount of money. Which is perfect for the challenge at hand because I need to save up for super mines. And how much does that cost on uh, easy? Only 106, but I say only as if that's a puny amount of money, but it's a lot, I know. Okay, got my balloon impact up, got my camel village, got my primary mentoring as well. Now all I gotta do is find some sort of defense that can make it to getting a Balloon Crush. Now, I was hoping I could probably fit both the Carver Spikes and the Super Mines in the middle, and I can. Do I commit? I actually want to place this, or rather Super Mines, a little bit higher up because uh, I feel like if we get Mines in the middle, they end up exploding in... Uh, uh, you end up getting a much better uh, Splash Radius to utilize it in, so it's not really... Uh, a very efficient like use of my space because now I'm just gonna place it here because I think it's it's the right choice. But now I can't really place anything else in this in this rectangle here. Even though normally you probably place like at least four or five towers. Okay, enough dwelling on that decision. Let me just go ahead and get the tier fours now. So spike mines to get me through popping balloons and then shredder into maybe spike storm if I need it. But honestly, I think this thing has enough mold damage for. Uh, what we're currently dealing with. Now, I did say earlier that uh, Chimps is the game mode that isn't just sleeper for the early day main game. Meanwhile, I'm literally just fast forwarding all through the, all these rounds because there's we're pretty much sitting back and doing nothing. So, aren't I contradicting myself a little bit there? Kind of, but what I mean by that, what I said earlier, is that there still is decision making involved in all aspects because I can't just willy nilly drop every tower down. Fill in every crack of the map, and that's all she wrote. In a survival challenge where all farms are enabled, there's Balloon Crush, by the way. Uh, there's essentially only one goal in mind from the get-go, and that is, again, as I said earlier, maximize the DPS possible by filling in every crack of the map and spamming 100 towers, and I just, again, don't think that's as fun. Also, we ran into a little bit of oopsie with the Balloon Crush. At this, uh, as it stands right now, each round is going to take 10 billion years. I'm just going to go ahead and get a Spike Storm. Even though I do have Speed Hack, even, even with that, it takes eons for this damn, just a single ZMG to get down. 
Could you imagine we're at 97? Yeah. I will admit, though, not a whole lot going on right now, so I guess gameplay-wise, it still kind of plays out similarly. But decision-wise now, it's not just about spamming every tier 5, and after that, I would guess the strongest character to spam is Spike Storm out of the rest, in terms of if we're trying to get to Epic Late Game. Attack shooters really aren't that good in this, uh... No monkeys only, because we don't have our beloved Ice Tower to buff to attack with. Only the village with the Jungle Drums, Homeland, and the Primary Surtees, but... We're severely lacking those damage buffs. Also, should I just buy Carpet Spikes? These... Even with Spike Storm, holy... It takes like... Five abilities to take down... The ZMG. Even worse when they're clumped because... Well, I can only hit really... Really one of them at a time. But now nah, I think I'll stick it out. We can probably save for Super Mines and... Just them timing out. Will be enough here to speed up the rounds. Again with the money, I'm definitely not gonna be dropping down every tier 5. Definitely not the Bomb Blitz. Probably not Super Meals from either. I think Tax Zones is still worth getting. Inferno Ring is also a maybe. I'm leaning on yes, because I guess the uh, Meteors, they do okay mob damage. Okay as at a thousand. Don't worry guys, only 20,000 more dollars to go. Here comes the BAD. Simply one Spike Storm is enough to pop it. Very nice game, very nice. And now, oh crap, oh crap. I'm so close to getting super mines, but I guess this run's gonna kill me because we don't have the pierce, right? Bruh. So close, so close. Do you think Carver Strikes would be a good decision here? Because I'm trying to think ahead. Are there any rounds where, uh, like, even though Carver isn't good against, um, what do you call it? These balloon tier? It's good against Moabs? Pretty sure it's shooting out spikes every 15 seconds. 15 seconds should be enough to uh, overcome that. And it looks like the answer to that is yes, so am I taking this? I guess I do, otherwise uh, I'm not sure what the uh, next cheapest thing to beat th this round would be. Uh, well, so much for getting super mines now, because uh, even with the carpet, you see, it doesn't do enough group damage that rounds are still taking eons. So maybe for just this moment, I uh, slightly regret not going for a, a farm run. Alright, 104, oh god, oh god, oh god. Don't die here. We're dead. Man, there is no way I'm I'm, I'm about to lose here. Really? Okay, so uh, let's try primary expertise. Surely, that should nuke out a good amount of the scrams, right? Don't tell me I'm throwing here. I guess I could also do a called arms. Because we need the pierce. It is really important. I will use it now. And uh, each spike now pops 50% more balloons. Same with Wound Crush, yes. Stuns 50% more, and that'll do, but hopefully that's the last setback before I get the Super Mines. Hmm, I kind of wonder if there's a different build order for this strategy that could have gotten Super Mines earlier. Maybe by omitting Blue Crush, because I guess the uh, earlier rounds maybe weren't necessary. I don't know, but all this waiting does kind of suck. I think at this part, point, I'll probably get Super Mines at about around 120-something. Guys, I kid you not, I've had speed act on the entire time, and I think this round alone has legitimately taken almost three minutes. I think pushing to four. Getting Bloom Crush was my biggest regret since making the first Sada joke two years ago. Good news is though, is that we're only 15k off your mind, so I might not have to wait to the 120s actually. The year is 2030, and I am delayed to say we finally have super minds, guys. So now watch as the timeouts will. Hopefully, wreck the ZMGs. Yup. Take a look at that. Them explosions, though. They pack a massive punch, so, okay. And what's next? Well, first off, let me just get the primary expertise so I can just get that out of the way. And my attacks and bombs will forever have free tier 2 upgrades, so long as they are within range of them. And then after this, I think I probably just want to get my Inferno Ring out of the way. God, if I planned this better, then I could fit another attack right in the middle, but... I guess this might have to do. Don't worry, I'll get a, I'll get a camel village for it later. Or should I just do it now? Uh, let's actually do it now, because I, I can double this count. <laughs> of course, of course. So again, friendly reminder, there's going to be a 502 for the extra damage, because we already have a lot of pierce from this expertise. And uh, as for my elim, I guess it'd be here. Now for the F bad on ground 140. Again, seeing how easy this is, I don't have, I'm not even using homeland yet or any abilities at all. That is why I think we got some good potential potential here. 
There is Eye Ring, set to strong. And now here, I'll actually get my homeland before it is too late. Add a boy. And uh, I think without Energizer, I need two more Call to Arms to uh, basically have full uptime on having extra attack speed and pierce. So uh, I guess I might as well turn this one into it. You know, already got the discounts dropped down, so sure. I actually actually lost my opportunity to triple discount the attack, but it'll be fine. I think we only lose out on a small bit. Elim next. Can I bite straight up? Almost. We should be able to afford it in the middle of uh, this round. Thank you very much. Which cross path? I guess I go range. Plus one damage on 100 damage ability. Or attack doesn't really do much. You know, you gotta love the change where they made the Call to Arms ability global. That definitely um, makes their defense a lot cleaner. Otherwise, I'd probably have to find a weird way to throw three middle path villages in the vicinity of Azure Mines. Wouldn't be a lot of fun doing that, let's just say. So, unsurprisingly, it is absolutely blowing out every other tower's pop count out of the water by a factor of, like, six or seven. But seeing how bads are getting at this point, do I really think I can make another 30 rounds? Yeah, might, might have been a little wish, wishful thinking on my part, saying that, blurring that. But it's okay, there's still a lot of power spikes to come. Still a lot of optimizations during rounds that I've yet to need. Okay, now it's getting concerning, because I, I I did use abilities pretty wisely this round, pretty much right when they came up. Yeah, that bad there. Got to the second last lane. Big yikes, big yikes. And actually, instead of getting that village on the right side to a um, second call to arms, uh, I will actually build a new army, because uh, I'm going to spam terrors anyways. Might as well get the double discount on some of them, right? Or at least get the party started, because then I can buy range on... Uh, second village rather than double dipping. Okay, here we go. This is getting scary. I think I honestly might just omit the uh, attack zone. Now that I'm looking at it, maybe, maybe Inferno Ring was a mistake. Although my way of coping and saying it was a good investment is that it, ha it has global range compared to attack zone. Or, you know, maybe the Elam was the mistake because it only does 4,500 as opposed to the attack zones again. 1,000, but it, it works on like multiple targets. Assuming anything didn't change also, Jungle Drums does not affect the... Uh, uh, amount of spikes or the power of the spikes or ability, so I'm gonna admit that for now while I'm working on these guys. I think I will commit to this over getting tax zone, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I just hope it doesn't become too close, you know what I mean? Or at least I get enough money so that I don't have to worry about one or the other. Also, another friendly reminder here is that why not spikes is useless because it doesn't give you extra damage. That is all I need to say. So watch this here. Homeland, and then four spike storms. I just kind of want to see. Look at this guy here. How much damage do we get? Like 15k from one, one ability. Not all of it probably landed on the bad. I saw some other balloons on screen, but that's still pretty good. For a, a low cost of like, I don't know, 6k. Ever since getting like just three spike storms, I've noticed it hasn't really been all too bad. Like I genuinely believe seeing how the spike storms are doing, I should just keep getting them. Like don't get tax zone because like would that really do 15k to each bad given how like they're going faster and faster and faster but remember it does work on multiple bad i i'm not sure you know just for the sake of not dwelling on the decision of if i should keep getting it or not let's just get it and forget about it like hell around like here is where it could potentially shine multiple bads in a row uh we'll go ahead and use a homeland combination right there uh how much damage is that See, not that much on the bats there, even though it's using a lot of spikes on, or a lot of attacks on other things. Oh, well. Now we can fu fully focus on just building spike storms, though, so... Are there any more I can double discount? Definitely. 13 rounds away from 200. Do you think we can make it? Leave a comment down right now on your prediction. Oh, no, have I become one of those YouTubers now? Why, yes, I have. Why, yes, I have. So, I basically, because the cooldown of the spike storm and the homeland is the same... I'm just keeping the homeland and the spikes from in sync for obvious reasons. Yet more uh, pierce per pile. So the blue pin air round is basically is homeland and then use all spike storms. Uh, once homeland times out, hold the line with a couple of uh, called arms. So one now and one later. Although it doesn't really matter. Once you pop all the bads, uh, it's just a waiting game thanks to balloon crush. Uh oh, this is getting scary. Luckily, seven spike storms are coming to save the day. Should be enough to pop this one, and oh crap. Do we have enough spikes for this last part? Please, please, please. Good, good, good. You know things are getting tight when I start repeating words in threes. 
I know I probably don't have to repeat it again, but it's pretty sad when a spike storm that I got, like, uh, well after the tax zone, I think this one, for example, is pretty much almost caught up to it pop-wise. I think I might be dead this round. Oh no, please. One more bad, but I don't have the spike storm up. That's a rip, guys. That's a rip. Unless... Come on, last minute. Oof, so close, so close. What do you think I can do to salvage here? Well, not really much, because, like, the bat is right on top of the other. That is... That is the reason why we're dying, but I'll, I'll slow down and make sure every ability is used properly. Just try to make sure all the towers are covered by Homeland every time, or called arms like that, for example. Use Homeland immediately, followed by eight spike storms. Uh, I actually almost have Homeland up again. Hang on. Is there anything I could change? I'm gonna use my eight spike storms now. Ugh. Bruh. Here's what I can change. Since I know that I missed Homeland by a little bit, literally just use it the moment it comes up. Okay, and do we suffer the same fate? I think we got this. I think we got this. Watch. Homeland? Go, go, go. Nice. And then we killed the other bad two in the back. Whew. Close call there. Close call. I would have been so mad if we lost there because that means, like, if I didn't get tax zone, it might have made a difference. But hopefully we can hold off, like, five more rounds. If I recall, my seeding for uh, the late 100s is pretty rough. Yeah, this was the rough seeding I was talking about. Look at this. Is that four bads? Basically back to back to back to back. Yikes. And then another one back there. Big yikes. Well, might as well go all of this run. So again, slow down. Make sure to keep called arms active at all times. Trying to build a an 11th. Hang on, an 11th uh, spike. Are we doing another set of 10? No. Oh man, it might be over here. There's still two left. I don't think that last one has a lot of damage on it, does it? Actually. No, nah, it's similar to one, 194. I need the homeland up immediately, so... Let's recalibrate. Again, recalibrate calibra by essentially using Homeland earlier so that I get that one. The one I was just missing for the ending. I also lied earlier. The Spike Storm cooldown is a little bit uh, faster than Homeland. Come on. No. And now? Come on. This has to pop. This has to pop. Nice. Like, you can genuinely see the burst in, like damage once we activate those 10 Homeland Spike Storms. It's crazy. And unfortunately, 199 has, is not too kind, although it does look a little bit more spaced, which could work in our favor. If we really die the round before 200, that would be the saddest thing ever. But here we go. One last Homeland, but this is it. We're gonna pop the second last one, or are we gonna pop the last one, please? Please, Spikes, please. Yeah, yes. It is done. Round 200, ladies and gents, we made it. So, uh, let's see if we have enough. Use uh, all 10 Spike Storms now, and it did not even make a 20% dent yet. Now it did. Another set of 10 up again. I think we're gonna do it. Okay. Spikes Factory plus single targets go hard. GG. And it's funny that just instantly we run into a round that I don't think we can beat, because uh, if an f bat is hiding behind a bad, that's even worse. Because this F-Bat is just, like, tanking all the spikes that should be going onto the F-Bat. But now, look how much damage we have to do. I don't think even with 11 Spike Storms, it's enough. Nope. Well, that was quick death after 200. One last try, though, just to see. But regardless of the result, I am still very impressed about how far we are able to make it on Chimps. Like, it's one thing to make it far into deep free play, but it's another thing to make it that far without the extra income of farms. And on top of that, no monkey knowledge. GG. I can't finish off without looking at the pop count and everything, so... Uh, 244 on Mr. Spike Factory. Only a tenth on the carpet. 23, 3.8. 8 million expertise. Only 1 million attack zone, sad. And the rest of the Spike Storms, like, about a million or so. Kind of funny that attack zone is the weakest out of all these. Anyways, that does it. If you want to check out my previous Chimps list run on Chimps, then click here. Otherwise, subscribe and stay tuned for more. Peace.